in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service today. On this, the second Sunday after Epiphany, it's good to be with you wherever you are. And let us start with our first hymn. of God has dawned upon the world to our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing the Gloria.
So let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelations. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals. And no one in heaven, on on earth, or under the earth, was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out onto all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the lamb each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God's saints, from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. After Jesus was arrested, Jesus came, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw son, James's son of Zebedee and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. 
immediately had called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So in our Gospel reading today, it's the version written by St Mark, and we hear the call of the very first disciples, right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. First, Simon Peter, and Andrew, then James and John. You might think that these very first disciples were a little bit simple. While they're busy working at their everyday tasks as fishermen, Jesus comes up and asks them to follow him. Immediately they drop their nets and they do just that. They follow him. This seems to us to be quite a rash act. Something rather unwise and unconsidered. They know almost nothing about this man who wants them to become his disciples and yet they drop everything and follow him. And we know from the Gospels, it literally did mean following him on his travels around Palestine. We are told that Jesus had already begun his preaching, but only just. But we aren't told in the text whether these first disciples had actually heard his first preaching or not. Yet even if they had heard Jesus preaching, they couldn't have known very much about him or the implications of the message that he delivered. Now these actions don't sound like the behaviour of responsible or prudent people. And yet these very few verses at the very beginnings of the Church of God on earth. These reckless and impulsive men become models for all subsequent members of the Church. We are not told their motives or any of their thought processes, just the bare fact that they are left their nets and boats and followed Jesus. There are no whys and wherefores recorded for us, just simple actions of leaving and following. All this would have seemed very strange and odd to Mark's Jewish readers, because their custom was for the disciple to search out and choose the master. But here it is clearly Jesus who takes the initiative. He calls, they follow. One possible conclusion that we might come to is how extraordinary attractive Jesus must have been. His command must have been absolutely compelling. We are told that not just one, but two sets of disciples both immediately leave what they are doing and follow him. The charisma of Jesus is underlined by Mark who indicates in the very next sentence to our chosen text just how amazed the people were in Capernaum at his teaching. Sticking to the few lines of the gospel given for today we see how Jesus picks up where John the Baptist left off. He immediately announces that the time has come for the fulfilment of the scriptures. We are then introduced to Jesus' inner group of disciples and told how they are called, and his ministry starts there and then. Jesus came to bring light to those who live in darkness, those who are in the dark about what God plans for the world. They will become enlightened. They will hear Jesus' preaching, discover that God loves them, and brings them salvation in the very fullest sense. Their eyes will be opened and they will see how from God's point of view besides appreciating the charisma and that appeal of Jesus' personality the first disciples suddenly have insight to this man Jesus. He is the one who knows the answers to all their questions. The one who can help them achieve a completely new perspective on life. This is why they leave everything and they follow him. 
they suddenly understand that Jesus can give them the only thing worth having, knowledge of God. And the same goes for us. It is this realisation that the only real answers to the great questions of life are to be found in Jesus that triggers our desire to follow him. Unlike the disciples, we don't actually see the man. All we have are his words recorded in the Gospels. And yet we have chosen to follow him. It must be because we have been given the insight to the sea that he really is the way, the truth and the life, just as he claimed to be. And this surely is the action of God's grace in our lives. We are the apostles for the world. We personally inhabit. It is our task to become so well acquainted with the message of Jesus that we can teach it to others. We therefore need to immerse ourselves in the gospel to become completely familiar with the words of Jesus and know him deeply through a lively conversation with him in prayer. It is only when we do these things that we will become effective in our task. This sounds like a lot to live up to. It sounds perhaps more than we bargained for. It might even be something that we are very reluctant to do. But be clear, this is our mission. This is our God-given task. He chose us. We did not choose him. His grace has been quietly acting in our lives all along. We might think that we are not worthy or able for the task, but he knows best. Those first apostles weren't made of very promising material, and I don't suppose that we are either. And even while they were with him, they misunderstood his intentions and went so far as to desert and even deny him. And yet, these were the ones that he chose. They were the ones on whom he built his church. They deserted him, but he did not desert them. And when Jesus ascended to the Father, he bequeathed them his Holy Spirit to be with them as a guide and protector. This same Spirit has been poured out on us and he is with us in this great task. We have been given to make Christ known to the world. In taking up this task, like the first apostles, we will find that there are things we must leave behind. And like them too, this is a journey we embark on without knowing where it will lead us. But it is a journey of faith, under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit, and undertaken on behalf of Jesus Christ himself. We are the ambassadors. We are his ambassadors. We are his apostles. We are his messengers of love to the world. How can we refuse such a mission? Amen. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all you bring to our lives. Speak to us, we are listening. You have our hearts, you share our thoughts. Please hear our prayers we bring before you. We pray that we may be reminded that we need saints in our everyday lives special people who walk beside us, who live and proclaim the gospel, who live out Christian virtues and inspire us daily. Help us to be everyday saints, Lord in your mercy. We pray for all those afflicted by war. We pray for the suffering of people and the destruction of homes and communities will end and peace will prevail. Lord in your mercy. As temperatures continue to plummet, bringing the risk of wintry hazards, we pray for those that are vulnerable and isolated. May they receive the help and support they need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those affected by the post office scandal. We pray that victims will be exonerated, compensated and move forward to leave happier, stress-free lives. 
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick and those who are feeling worried and suffering with feelings of low self-worth. We remember the sick, including Margaret, little Lee, Caris, Pauline, Bill, Anne, Mike, Sylvia, Maggie, Vernon, Lee, Pat, David, Martinette, Tony, Sandra, Joy, Wayne and Marco. May friends and family help lift them from the shadows and lead them to the lights. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your love those who are now with you in life eternal, especially remembering Anne, Len, Lorna, Anne, Derek, Wayne and Rob. May they rest in your love and the life of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Lord, please guide us throughout this year. Please help us to help others and to give us peace of mind as we journey through 2024. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace and the increase of his government of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our hymn. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made presence in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations in the water of baptism. Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey Jesus' command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before Jesus died, having supper with friends and taking bread, Jesus prayed you, broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, Jesus praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. We plead with confidence in the sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim Jesus' death and resurrection until coming in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Joseph and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here amongst us, light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. glory you nourish us with your word who is the bread of life fill us with your holy spirit that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world we ask this in the name of jesus christ our lord amen we sing our final hymn
good to join with you wherever you are. If you are local, next Sunday is our next Celtic service at Rescola, um, and that's always followed by tea and refreshments, and uh, if you are local, it'd be good for you to join us. That's at six o'clock at Rescola, at the old Rescola Chapel, um, and it's always a lovely occasion, um, and the, the fellowship afterwards is always wonderful. Uh, I look forward to being with you next week. If you have any prayer requests, uh, please feel free to email me, stjmoec at gmail.com, stjmoec at gmail.com. Always good to hear from you, wherever you are. Uh, during this week, uh, just a special mention, Elaine Pierce. Uh, who joins us from Scotland, um, is 90 on Tuesday. And we wish Elaine a very happy birthday. So Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.